just really excited about having the opportunity to be a part of Nebraska basketball and the Nebraska tradition. Uh, you know, athletically, uh, I've had a, over the years uh, have really followed it. You know, uh, probably uh, just as a fan of Nebraska athletics. You know, back to the Tom Osborne days and uh, what have you in football and. You know, even when you know Danny Knee, I'm, I'm, I, I value myself as a as a sports fanatic, and uh, so you know, have an opportunity now to come back and uh, after coaching, you know, as a head coach against some Nebraska teams, as assistant coach when I was at K State or what have you, and then now you know it's almost surreal, you know, just have an opportunity to be you now on this side of it from um, and and helping. Nebraska basketball be successful. So my family and I are really excited having this opportunity to, uh, that Fred has uh, bestowed upon me and uh, have an opportunity to work with Nate and Adam and, and Luca and the, Matt and the rest of our staff. So I'm just really excited to get after it and get ready to put ourselves in position to have uh, a successful, help Fred be successful and help our program be successful and take that next step. Well, uh, I think you know those, those things I just stated, and, and Fred Hoiberg. Uh, you know, when I, you know, we all in this business. When you're, you know, you're blessed to be in it. You know, as long as I have, you do your due diligence, and you and you have a lot of relationships. And everyone I spoke to said, "Hey, Fred is a great offensive-minded coach, and probably more importantly, he's a great person." And um, those are the people you want to be with. And I've been blessed, you know, to work for uh, guys like Ben Howland and and Tom Asbury, Ray McCallum, or what have you. And it's, you know, the, the common denominator is good, great people have great success. And that's why I wanted to be here and um, have the opportunity to help Fred Hoiberg do just that, have great success. How much does getting back into Big Ten territory or the Midwest at least appeal to you? Oh, <laughs> you know, you're right. I've, you know, I've been, you know, across the water coaching in the beginning and, to come back full circle and be back in a region where it's home and, uh, you know, have an opportunity to, to uh, now, you know, for me personally, you know, that now it's, I've, I've almost touched on all power, all five power five conferences. And um, so the Big Ten growing up in Big Ten country, you know, the Big Ten has always been, in my mind, the best power five country conference. So having that opportunity now is, you know, just another blessing and just looking forward to rolling my sleeves up and getting after it. What's your, what was your reaction as you got here and kind of saw the facilities and just, you know, the, the surroundings, where you're going to be at? Blown away, blown away. Uh, the last time I was here, which was as a head coach at Central, and uh, we played here in a non-conference game, it was December of 11, 2011, and uh, we played here in this building, the Devaney Center. And so, uh, you know, coming back and just seeing, you know, how the facilities and the resources, I mean, you know, this is one of the top situations in the country. And having this opportunity to uh, help the program take this next step is, you know, just extremely excited about it. Fred mentioned that he values your experience as a head coach. What did you learn about that Central Michigan experience? What do you think that can that you learn from it that can help you with this job? Well, I think, you know, the, the first thing is understanding it's about one thing, making sure your head coach is successful. And I think a lot of times as assistants, young assistants, old assistants, you know, guys, you get caught up into what you think versus what's best for him. And um, I know, you know, being able to be that bridge for that and understanding that and, and knowing that, you know, it's about staff chemistry. It's about we and not us and um, understanding, you know, when to interject ideas and then having a thick enough skin to know that uh, when the head coach says, no, I'm not doing that, hey, you keep your head on the uh, – or, or keep your head up straight and you keep battling and you keep trying to help the program win and uh, be successful and helping our players daily. That's the big thing, helping our guys get better every day because they get better incrementally every day. It puts Coach Hoiberg in a position to put them in the positions to be successful. Staff from you guys, to your point there, to, to help him be successful, help the program be successful. 
just you know, just working together and being together and 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 um, and helping our guys get better every day. You know, I think you know having that cohesiveness. You know, quite obviously, you know, Adam just came on a few months ago. Nate's the senior uh, guy on the staff in terms of how things are done and what Fred likes because he's been around him the longest. And and for me, it's just about being a sponge and, and, and learning those things, but also being able to give the experience as, experiences I've had to help us get our players better. Because the top of my line is, is if our players take this next step, our program will take this next step. And that's our job is to get them to strive towards their ultimate levels of success daily. I think we got to, uh, I'm really, uh, when I came in a few weeks ago initially and um, was here and got the chance to watch a workout and, you know, I had, had seen Derek Walker a few years back when he was at Tennessee when I was at Mississippi State and, you know, he's really grown as a player. I think he's going to be a very valuable asset and leader to this team with his experience and savvy. Uh, Juwan Gary, you know, coached against him here a few years, the you know, past few years, and, and while he was at Alabama, and he's just a junkyard dog, a winner, um, you know. And then, um, you know, watching, um, um, I've seen uh, uh, the kid from SMU a few times as well. Uh, so I just think we have some pieces, you know, to put ourselves in position to compete at the top of our conference, and that's going to be our goal. I, you know, I know we're going to go in and we're going, to, we're going to strap it up and put ourselves in position to take that next step. With recruiting, obviously recruiting to UCLA is one thing, but recruiting to a place like Nebraska doesn't have that success you know, on the court. What's kind of your, your pitch to selling this program going forward? I think the, the number one thing is our head coach, is Fred Hoiberg. You know, you know special, pe special people make places special. And I think Fred Hoiberg is a special person. And so, you know, selling him and then selling our, our, our brand here at Nebraska and the facilities and, you know, once you get them here and they see this and with the combination of Coach Hoiberg, you know, it's going to be a win-win. When you're selling Fred, what are you selling? How do you sell Fred? Wow, that's an easy one. <laughs> you know, with him, it's, he's an NBA guy. He's a, I mean, you know, the different people I've talked to and they talk about, you know, the best offensive minds in this, in, in the business. I mean, he's one of them. So, you know, for a young guy that, at this level, guys that want to play, they aspire to be an NBA. And he's been there, done that. So, you know, that's the thing. And then from there, it's like, you know, now you're working with the guy every day that's pushing you to reach your ultimate level of success, but not in a demeaning way. And that's, you know, in this culture of kids, you know, I've, you know, been in there long enough to see it go from, you know, where, hey, when the coach said this, that was it, versus now it's why. And, you know, you have to be able to understand and adapt to that. And I think Fred Hoiberg is one of the uh, best coaches in the business to be able to help guys reach their full potential. What have the last few months been like for you since the, since the Mississippi State thing uh, shook out? How have you, have you looked at other jobs? What was, did you take some time away? What did no, for me, um, you know, it, it was a blessing in disguise because we had some issues in my family. My daughter was dealing with some things, and she lives in Texas. So my wife and I were able to go and be with her a little bit. But at the same time, you know, I was able to talk to a few different coaches about different situations. But, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian man, and I'm a firm believer that, you know, it's not on our time, it's on his time. And, you know, as I went through that, you know, God – was leading me to this uh, this situation, and obviously this situation didn't open up till mid July, which isn't the ideal time for any coach to be making and dealing with staff situa uh, staff changes. But you know, here I am, and I'm just blessed to have the opportunity. Your son is just up the road. Uh, speaking with Coach Mack at Creighton, <laughs> what, uh, what a family get together is going to be like now. It's a, you guys are rivals. Oh wow! You know, it's funny. Uh, <laughs> My wife and I, we drove in and stayed the night with him in his apartment Monday night. And, um, you know, for the first time in his career, I, I'm going to have to go against him and not root for him and try to kick his butt. So that's going to be the plan. He's going to have to take that L. <laughs>